Welcome to the beginning of what promises to be a huge series where we take our stolen and recovered budget Evo with a blown motor and do a rear wheel drive conversion with a Nissan Silvia CA18 DET motor. We've got a long road ahead of us and we won't be cutting any corners with this build. So dim the lights, sit back and relax while I get busy tearing this thing down. So I'm here by my lonesome in the workshop and we're about to dig in to the first episode of the FIVO CA18 DAT rear wheel drive swap. This is officially the last time this car will be front wheel drive because once we pull all of the engine and drivetrain out of this, that's it. It's on its way to being a rear wheel drive car which is pretty freaking cool. Now at this point, you guys know exactly as much as I do in terms of what lies ahead. In fact, I'm not even sure really what it's gonna take to get the engine out of this. Because I'm a big rear wheel drive guy, we have taken the gearbox out of this before to put a clutch in it, but we've never taken the motor out. To me, it seems like it's going to be quite a simple task. I think what we can do is just undo obviously everything that is attached to say the engine bay from the motor um, and then literally just drop it down and lift the body of the car off the the engine and the gearbox. But everyone that's watching this video that's worked on a car before knows that it's probably not going to be that easy. But one thing I'm a little bit curious about before we even get started is, I wonder if the motor will turn over like as it is. I know it's a silly idea, but I'm kind of keen to throw a battery in this thing and see if it'll turn over just for shits and giggles. You guys must be as curious as I am to see kind of what state everything is in. So I'll grab a battery, we'll throw it in and um, turn the key, I guess. It's all for entertaining content, let's be honest. Fresh battery going in. Which way around does it go? All right, the battery's hooked up. It's kind of on the piss, but that's fine. It's sitting where it needs to sit. So uh, <laughs> I guess let's try and turn it over. Three, two, one. What the hell? It runs. <laughs> what? That can't be right. I'm tripping out right now. I did not actually expect that to start, let alone run. Three cylinder, turbo. <laughs> Should we try it again and see if it'll rev? That's crazy. of the video because we don't need to rebuild the FIVO because it still runs all good, so. <laughs> That's crazy, I'm actually blown away right now. The thing is completely empty of all of its oil, so we don't have to worry about it making a big mess on the floor. I just can't believe it runs. That's that's really funny, so shout out Mitsubishi, because even when you blow your motors up, somehow it still keeps running. All right, enough of the shenanigans. It is time to pull the motor out of the car, so. First up, we've got to remove everything up top or as much as I can, and then we'll chuck the car in the hoist, jump underneath, take the exhaust and stuff off, and um, kind of figure out how we are going to attack this and clear out this engine bay ready for our CA18 DET. We don't have the CA yet. We're going to pick it up this weekend, so that'll be in another video, which will be cool because, you know me, we'll get straight to test fitting it straight away, which is going to be a very exciting moment. But for now, let's start ripping this motor out. Let's go. We've made some really good progress on the FIVO, but unfortunately the night has gotten away from me. I had some really exciting phone calls come through about some upcoming events later in the year, which you should be excited about. And it does involve the FIVO as well, which is really cool. But that unfortunately means I kind of ran out of time tonight. But we got all the stuff on top of the car, like all unhooked off the motor, which is really cool. As you saw, I got all the fluids off, I had piping and everything as well. So tomorrow morning we're gonna come back in, get the car in the air, take the exhaust off. And then I believe pretty much after that, we can undo the engine mounts. Not really a subframe, is there? Because the subframe is like separate to the motor. So the engine mounts will undo and then kind of lift the car off. Hopefully it should be smooth sailing. Then we can clean the engine bay and get a clearer view of uh, exactly what we're looking at in terms of space in the engine bay and kind of start to get a vision of how this whole 
thing is going to come together. Then we also need to pull all the rear stuff out as well. But I'm just trying to work it out as to where I can have the car rolling around the shop because as you guys can see, we've got, you know, a limited space in the shop and we've got quite a few cars. So we just got to make sure that we can kind of move this thing around because we still have events coming up for the E36. So we have to put that on the lift, get that ready and stuff. So uh, the Lancer can't constantly take up the lift all the time. So my life is basically a logistical nightmare of swapping cars around and putting the puzzle together. But right now I'm going to go home, get some sleep. I'll meet you guys back here at the shop in the morning. Until then, have a good sleep. Bye. Time. We're feeling refreshed, kind of. Time to get this thing in the air. And uh, now we can get a glimpse underneath. Ooh -wee. Look at that. It's a big window. There's another one up top as well. Right there. And then I think there's another one around the back. Yeah, big one. Not sure if you can see it in the... Yeah, you definitely can actually. So, plenty going on there. Pretty sure I'll do like a mini episode on tearing down the motor just to have a quick look and see what happened to it, which will be a nice fun piece of content. But for now, we're gonna go ahead, rip the exhaust off and start doing the last little jobs that we need to do to get this motor out of the car. It is interesting looking through here. There is a, some kind of, kind of tunnel right through the middle of the car, right down the center. So who knows whether we'll have to modify that to accept the CA18 gearbox but um it's nice to know that that's there this is a very interesting journey that we are currently undertaking but so exciting after doing the e36 build and just the attention to detail that we started to pay on that and now it's finished i really miss doing a build like that so this build here is very very exciting for me because we basically get to dig right into the next phase of learning more attention to detail doing something that's beautiful interesting different so that's enough talking let's drop the exhaust is off. Massive thanks to Woz for helping out. You know how I said that we're kind of cramped for space in here? Well, we're going to take a quick break from the Fevo and we're going to do a quick YouTube magic transition right here, but we're going to do a nice big upgrade where we extend out this mezzanine floor up here and everything's going to go from here up to the top. Ready? Three, two. What the hell? Hmm. YouTube magic did not work that time. Potentially because I'm running out of YouTube magic mana, but I heard if you hit that subscribe button, it tops up the YouTube magic. But back to the fever. Let's go. It is time to rip out the fuel tank. So I drained it out as much as I could. I will get the gearbox jack, put it under, and we're gonna take that out. And then time for the motor to come out. tank is out and look at all the space that we have down here now Ooh, so we now have the room that we need so diff goes here engines up there drive starts down here all the good times a lot of you guys will be wondering what the heck we're going to do about fuel well we're probably going to run a fuel cell if i'm honest you can get fuel cells with surge tanks and built in them now i know it's a bit of a pain in the butt because you don't have like a fuel level fuel sender with the level in it but then at the same time there is a potential that we could actually steal the fuel sender out of the stock tank and put it into a fuel cell and kind of have some kind of fuel fuel sender you know so that we can have a gauge of some sorts but down the back here basically cutting all this out so all this gets cut out spare wheel well and this sticky down guy here gets cut out right up to basically the chassis rails here as you can see so like once everything's cut out of there and we just have like it flat up here then we can start to assess the rear end fun fact about this car it has basically exactly the same wheelbase as an s13 so it's 50 mils difference which is pretty mental so it's basically exactly the same 
as an S13, which is cool. So if we put an S13 front in it, with some cut and shut knuckles and a nice steering setup, essentially it should drive pretty much exactly like an S13. And as many of you guys will know, S13s are very fun and nice to drift. So that's kind of where I'm at the thinking at the moment. But now the fun part, we get to drop the motor out of the front of the car. So I'm gonna undo a couple more things and then we're gonna lower the car down. I'll put a dolly on the ground and then we're going to lift the body off the motor. It's officially out. Look at that. Look at that, mate. Jesus. Big hole one, big hole two, big hole three around the back. That's crazy. Oh, you can see right through. Dang, son. A lot of you guys asked me about this sandwich plate here, by the way, that I put on for the oil send for the turbo. Um, I can't remember exactly which one it is, but all you do is look up the thread pitch on the oil filter for the 4G93, and then buy the oil sandwich plate that has the same thread pitch, and you're sorted. Right now, it's really messy in here, so what we're gonna do, use up a little bit of our YouTube magic, and we're gonna get the car on the ground, back on its wheels, so we can take it outside and clean the engine bay. Let's go, three. Two, one. Ooh, there she is. No longer a front wheel drive car. I guess it's kind of no wheel drive right now until you can't call it real drive, it's not got anything in it. Can't call it front wheel drive because it's not got anything in it, so it's currently no wheel drive. Just looking at the engine bay now, we've got a huge amount of work ahead of us. Most of the stuff that you can see in the engine bay right now will be deleted. Pretty much everything will be keeping the brake master, clutch master, and that's kind of it. This Sunday, we are picking up our CA18. I would have picked it up earlier, but we are taking the E36 and doing some demos at a monster truck show on Saturday, so I'll be prepping the car tomorrow, just making sure it's all good before we take it out for a thrashing on Saturday. So that puts a little bit of a pause on obviously working on the lights on Saturday while we're out having some fun, but can't say no to drifting and it'll be in front of a really big crowd, which will be fun. But Sunday we go pick up the CA, of course we'll be filming and all that jazz, and I'm hoping to bring it back and kind of just sit it somewhat in the engine bay, uh, even if it's just to have a look at where positioning would start to be. So now that the lights are stripped, it is all about cutting this thing up and starting to see where everything is going to fit, which is very, very cool. That's us for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the subscribe button if you are enjoying the series. It's going to be a long one, but it's going to be really fun. And we do have some very exciting news behind the scenes about the Fevo and its future and uh, driving and all that stuff. So make sure you stay tuned on that. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it also. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much as always for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Peace. Bye. Fevo.